Hey, welcome to day eight of fasting to feast. Um, I'm really thankful that you guys are sticking with it and that you're coming along um, with us on this journey. Um, I, I just have a growing sense of peace um, as we near Sunday. Um, I continue to talk with other people in this region who, um, you know, we all have different parts in the body and, and their part also is to be sensitive as to what the Spirit is doing in the heavenly places, what Holy Spirit is saying and, um, and calling that back to the body. And they also are just have a sense of anticipation about God doing something on Sunday. Um, so it's been exciting to talk with some of them about it. And, and today I just have such a, a sense of rest and peace in the Spirit, um, which is really fun. Um, I was reading in Colossians this morning and it just came alive to me in some ways and it, it goes back to something that we were talking about before about the death, burial, resurrection and ascension of Jesus, how um, our life is to be lived in the house of God, right? Like Jesus is the threshold and he is the door and he called himself the door. We are to walk through the door of Jesus into the fullness of, of the house, of being a daughter or a son of God. We have access to all the inheritance that Christ has, and we get to learn how to walk and possess our inheritance while we are here on earth. I don't know about you, but um, I was mostly taught that growing up spiritually, I came to Christ when I was 23, and the first five years of my life was in a really great church. Um, super discipleship church um, so which is really good but there were some people like my age that were there too who had different ideas um, about um, what does that inheritance look like and for the most part I think I was taught or I just believed um, that we come into our inheritance when we die like when we get to heaven we get to have it all um, but I love what Jesus prayed he said, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. And he said, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And there's a, there's a both and tension, and, and Matt talks about that sometimes. It's the now and not yet. And I want to know all about the inheritance that I have and I'm allowed to walk in right now. There is a fullness, there is a rest that we have been called into, into the house. We have been called to walk past the threshold of the cross of Christ, the door of Christ, into the fullness of relationship with Christ, into fullness of relationship with God our Father and, and Holy Spirit. And many of us don't, haven't been taught that we've just been taught to stay at the door and look at the cross that's a great place to start Hebrews says the writer of Hebrews says those are the elementary things and we actually should know <coughs> more about what that is and we don't um what what's our inheritance what are we allowed to partake of right now what are we allowed to experience right now in the house um so reading um Colossians today um which is super exciting. I'm gonna read you a part of it and just hopefully you'll be encouraged um, in the same way that I was. Um, I wish you could have known how much, this is chapter two, Paul speaking. I wish you could have known how much I've struggled for you and for the church in Laodicea and for many other friends I've yet to meet. I'm contending for you that your hearts will be wrapped in the comfort of heaven and woven together in love's fabric. This will give you access to, for all the riches of God as you experience the revelation of God's great mystery, Christ. Love is the agent. It's what gives us access to all the riches of God as we experience God's revelation in Christ, who is Christ. For our spiritual wealth is in him. It's in him. Like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation knowledge and that's for us to you to partake of right now to to be a part of to be in union with jesus right now means that we get to partake of these things he says i want you to know this so that no one will come and lead you into error through the persuasive arguments and clever words 
um, he says in if further down in verse 6, In the same way you receive Jesus our Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. And just stopping there, we are called. This is a command. It's imperative to 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 um, progress further into our union with him. How do you get to know somebody better? You spend time with them. You have a conversation with them. You're just with them. You don't always have to do something. And for those of you who are married, you know that. Sometimes experiencing something together grows your relationship together. Sometimes you do something, even as friends, um, you do something that the other person wants to do. And maybe that wasn't something that was naturally something you wanted to do, but you went and you did it and you experienced it and it was actually a rush or it was actually really fun. And you wouldn't have known that had you not gone along. And I think the same is true with our relationship with Jesus. Like we could just have him as a deposit, have Holy Spirit as a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance and then see Jesus when we die. We could do that, but we have been invited into relationship with him. We get to go where he wants to go, empowered by his spirit to do it. And as we go, we get to experience things we never would have on our own. And it's such an adventure. And that's what we're being called to right now. And I believe that's what God is really gonna be doing in these next few days and weeks. He's empowering his bride once again. Um, we have had time to, kind of look at ourselves kind of face to face um and I don't know about you but I've been challenged by my own walk with Jesus like how if I am called to make disciples what does that look like he said go all of you go and that means all of us go <laughs> he didn't say go make converts he didn't say you put on a a Sunday morning so that everybody's super encouraged. I mean, that's really good. There's really good things in that. And we're to grow and to encourage one another, not forsake meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but but um, gather together and all the more as we see the day approaching, we're supposed to do that. But Jesus' command to us is to go and make disciples. So how do we do that? We go follow him into the places where people do not know him or the people that do know him don't know how to go further in him. And there's adventure there. And it's more than just me and my comfort. It's following Jesus on the adventure of the day through Holy Spirit and his power. Um, so he says, um, your spiritual roots go deeply into his life. This is verse 7. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way. For you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. There's so many, um, those pictures again of, of plants and being rooted and seeds and, and things germinating and stuff. And I love that. Um, he says, beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you and their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. Listen, I think um, American Christianity looks like something because we're afraid. Um, we're just afraid. And I, I'm just going to say that out loud. And, um, you know, it, when, if you've ever been on a missions trip and you've seen people all out for Jesus, like dancing and um just so full of joy that they're physically expressing it when we're on a missions trip, that seems really normal. And we think, yeah, you know, like that's really great. And then maybe even there's something that happens in us in our spirit that loosens up a little bit and we can partake of that. And we're just so encouraged and we're just like, this is great. And you just sense the, the nearness of God. You sense his presence, especially um, as you go with those missionaries out to um, reach other people in that place. And then we come home and all of a sudden we feel constricted again like oh we don't we don't do that we don't express love that way we just all of a sudden feel very um, hindered why is that I just I'm challenged by that um, why can't I express my love to Jesus so freely and openly 
and um, and why why can't you you know um, sometimes we get talked out of it sometimes we think well here's what I want to challenge you with if we think it's okay for Jesus to um, for people to express their worship with Jesus that way in other places because those are other places but that's not okay for us I'm going to I'm going to challenge you a little bit and say that's pretty prideful. Like we don't do that. Why? Cuz that's not how it's done, but but people in other countries express their worship and their devotion that way. Why? Cuz they're a third world country or they don't have all the things that we have. You know? If this faith in Jesus is true, a lot of it a lot of what we do here should be transferable in any culture. And if we can't have church, like we've been learning, if we cannot have church without a big band, <laughs> without all the devotionals, without all the videos, if we don't know how to be still before Jesus by ourselves, if we can't transfer our relationship with Jesus from here into a third world country, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to push back and wonder, what is it really? What is it? Don't let anybody talk you out of the fullness of relationship that you have with Jesus. Don't Just like you wouldn't let anybody talk you out of the fullness of love for your husband or your wife or your child or your friend. When you know that friend is genuine or you know your wife or husband is genuine, your child is genuine. You would never let anybody talk, about, talk you out of expressing your love towards that person. Don't let anybody talk you out of expressing your love fully to God. And don't let anybody talk you out of your inheritance. I just wanted to encourage you with that today. Um, there's an inheritance that we have, and I feel like in these days that we're coming up, we're going to get to explore a lot of the rooms, if you will, of, the, of this house of God that we've been called into. Um, it's a both and though. There's an invitation. There's always been an invitation. Um, you get to say yes. You get to walk in. You get to cross the threshold. You get to walk into the house and you get to ask God questions. What's this? What is that? I don't know what that is. Or Jesus, they seem to be using a gift over there. I don't, I don't know what that is. What is that? And is that for me too? Like, is that part of my inheritance? Is that something I can have? Is that something special to them? God, why? Why in this room of the house, if you will, why is this present? Why do you have this here in this place? Um, we get to ask him questions, I think, in the days coming up. Um, but it starts with not being afraid to walk into the house and the fullness of the, of the inheritance that you've been given in Christ. And then the freedom to say yes, to explore the house with, I'm going to say it, your dad. He's a good, good father, and he wants to show you the inheritance that cost him the life of his son. And it's going to be really fun, and it's going to be really good. Don't let anybody talk you out of not going in. It's yours to have, and it's yours to reject, um, but there's more. There's always been more. That's why we exist here at Deep Rivers, to encourage the more. Um, even as we are learning, there's more. We haven't arrived ourselves. Um, we just, <laughs> we're just like, hey, the door's open. Let's all go in. That's just pretty much what we're doing. Um, so let me end with this. We've been buried with him into his death. Our baptism into death also means we are raised with him when we believed in God's resurrection power, the power that raised him from death's realm. This realm of death describes our former state for we were held in sin's grasp, but now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return. This is the word of God. We have been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return for we are forever alive and forgiven of all our sins. And all in the Greek means all our sins. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all. Our sins, our stained soul, that was the sins past, present, and future, and our sin factory 
that was create was the one that was responsible for creating for it. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. You cannot retrieve this. It has crashed. It, you you can't go back into the computer of your life and restore those old files. They're gone. That's what Jesus says. That's what His Word says. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto His cross, Jesus' cross, and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. And then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. Whew. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a, in a, in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. Fam, you've been set free. You've been bought with a price, the precious blood of Jesus. It was his blood that canceled out the debt of sin. It was him being on the cross that canceled out the curse for us. We've been invited to cross the threshold into the fullness of the house. You have an inheritance to discover, and so do I more and more. So we're going to keep discovering it. Press in and press on. I believe that um, whether you're following us on social media or whether you are part of our email group, there's something for everyone coming this Sunday. So we cannot wait to see what God will do. Keep pressing in. Um, your fasting is accomplishing something, not just for yourself, but for our region. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to do this with you. Love you.